is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Morgan Knudsen moves into an apartment with a friend from work, she feels life is just beginning. But the spirit of a lost child threatens the peace of their new home. Now, Morgan must risk everything to save those she loves from an entity dead set on destruction. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Edmonton, Canada, a trading post turned modern metropolis, known as the gateway to the north. But within this bustling city, other gateways exist to a dark, unholy realm. February 2003. Morgan Knudsen, now 20 years old, is a musician and aspiring composer. And until recently, she had no home of her own. I was going from place to place and house to house. It was terrible not having that place to say, this is my home. Six months earlier, her parents divorced and left the province. But Morgan decided to stay and find an apartment. I had nowhere to go. My extended family was not close. I was relying so much on my friends. Recently, Morgan found a job at a computer tech support center. But she still can't afford a place on her own. Bob Levesque also works at the tech center. All right, let's put that here. That was easy. Yeah, uh, move it a little to the right. He was very outgoing, very friendly, right. and we connected right off the bat. Just, just a tad more. Okay, wait, that, that's what, that's way too far. Go back a little bit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, sorry. You know what? It's perfect. That's good. All right. Majesty. <laughs> he was having roommate trouble as well. This is nice. yeah. So we thought, you know, let's start looking for a place together. They get lucky, finding the perfect apartment atop a four-story walk-up. And we both wear our hearts on our sleeves, so everything that we loved went out onto shelves, which made the place very special. Bob was in a really tough place. 
He had separated from his wife and hadn't seen his kids in months. That physical separation and distance was very, very difficult for him. Sorry, I've been feeling a little funny about this, but they're Wicca candles. Wicca? Like witches and warlocks? <laughs> That's the popular misconception. Wicca is a religion like any other. Only we honor the earth and nature. Most people look at it like it's a Dungeons and Dragons witchcraft. <laughs> don't worry, Bob. I'm agnostic. I don't care what you pray to. Good. You see, each candle has a special purpose and meaning. This one represents love. And this one, protection. Cool. Well, it was nice having something that represented an emotion and a feeling that I hadn't had for months. Now, come here. Welcome home, roommate. Bob was really the ideal roommate. I couldn't ask for a, an easier person to stay with. A few days later. Okay. No. Well, here, try it with your key. It was almost like somebody had the lock on the other side and wasn't allowing us to, to uh, undo it. Great. Is there somebody in there? Wait here. We heard noises like shuffling and footsteps. What's going on? Is it a burglar? shadows moving around, there, there was nothing. Or something. What? You just startled me, that's all. Oh. I guess the noise we were hearing was coming from the apartment next door. But the apartment next to us is empty. Oh, well, these old buildings just tend to sigh and creak. It's probably nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Later that night. Go to bed, Bob.
Sorry, I... I thought I heard something. I told you, these old buildings tend to creak. And sigh, right. I guess that's it. Mm-hmm. All right, good night. Good night. I wasn't sure what to make of it. It was very, very unnerving. Morgan and Bob have lived in their apartment for two weeks when they throw a small housewarming party. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess Silver isn't dead after all. Who knew you're so strong, Court? No, oh, she says that to all my slaves. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, Morgan, I wouldn't have needed your slaves to carry me up if you had moved into a building with an elevator. Morgan invites Stephanie Wirtz, a grad student and her best friend. In high school, me and Morgan, we hang out all the time. We became extremely close and still are. I consider her like a sister to me. I would like to propose a toast to the new apartment and new friends. And new possibilities. Courtney Clapper here. manages the tech center where Morgan and Bob work. The first time I met Morgan, she really stepped up and went above and beyond what I think normal people do in trying to assist other people and being the best they could be. These are um, possibly the most hideous things I've ever seen. Hey, these are my good luck charms. I can do these myself. She had almost a spark about her. So, who's got some dirt to dish? Hmm? Anybody? Well, I have been wondering who my roomie has been sneaking off to see the past couple of nights. Oh. <laughs> wow. I know you're trying to be quiet, but I can still hear your footsteps. Who's the lucky lady? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Which department does she work in? Oh, well, maybe it's just Morgan's wishful thinking, okay? Well, maybe somebody here is um, hoping for a late night rendezvous with you know who. Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Court is a friend and a supervisor at work. Oh, does she flirt with you there too, Court? I'm not flirting. <laughs> Hats off to the chef. Meal was excellent. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Were you serious about hearing footsteps at night? Because I wasn't lying, it's not me. Well, I believe you. I guess my ears are just playing tricks on me. <laughs> no, they're not. I've been hearing things too. And I've seen some things. The other night I saw what I think was a spirit. The spirit of a little eight-year-old boy. His name was Joseph. How do you know his name? He told me. He's come a couple of times. He talks to me. Look. I was concerned that maybe his subconscious was generating, I'd hate to say an imaginary friend, but something to replace that need to be with his children. I've never experienced anything like this before. Have you? It it didn't hurt you or, or no. scare you? No, not at all. I kind of felt sorry for him, actually. Wait. I got an ID. I'll be right back. I couldn't knock out of my mind the occurrences that had happened earlier with the footsteps and the door lock. What if this is connected? According to wicked belief, Lighting this candle will bring a special sense of peace and harmony to the home. Many Wiccans believe sacred objects focus and strengthen their prayers. It'll unify us, you, me, Joseph. What if this boy is a 
spirit. The next morning. Hey, don't forget I got a doctor's appointment today. I'm off. I'll see you later at the office. Good luck, Bob. Those keys had not been on the hook. They had literally come out of nowhere. I've always been a little bit more of a skeptic than a believer, but I can't explain what just happened. there's a ghost in our apartment. A ghost? Yeah, or, or a spirit of some kind. It was a relief to me to be able to tell somebody that I knew without question would believe what I was telling them. Look, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. Morgan? Morgan. Hey. Hey. I had a really good time last night, and I was wondering, uh, do you want to go out for drinks? Oh, I'd love to, but... I just made plans. Uh, Can I take a rain check? Sure. Yeah. Um, have you seen Bob around? He had a doctor's appointment this morning, but I'm surprised he's not back by now. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I've been thinking. I must have imagined it. I mean, the keys must have been there the whole time. What did Bob say? He didn't come in today. He had a doctor's appointment and wound up being out all day. Look, maybe it's not as crazy as it seems. I was watching this TV show today where this lady was talking about the supernatural. Okay, well, here. I taped it, okay? Sit down. Lorraine Warren has investigated the supernatural for 30 years. The spirit is attracted to our aura. The supernatural glow that surrounds our physical body, because that depicts the person that we really are. Yeah. Do you think this Lorraine Warren has a website? Maybe, yeah. I'll just check. Okay. Oh, we Animals. became admirers of Lorraine Warren's cases and investigative techniques. The cases that she's dealt with have always been very difficult and and very strenuous, yet she's pulled through them. We thought, because we had nowhere else to turn for advice, that Lorraine Warren might be our, our best bet. Lights! Should light. Having trouble? I think you got the whole candle thing covered. I need this one to light. Well, maybe the wick got wet somehow. This wick would not even accept the flame. He's diagnosed with cancer today. What? What did you say? I said blood cancer. Oh my god, Bob, I'm so sorry. 
You know what? I think I have a lighter. I was devastated. This could mean the end of a very close friend. Bob? Bob, I, I just... I'm really sorry. Not right now, please. Okay. Just, if you need to talk... Please! Please! <sighs> I don't know what to think. I mean, first Bob thinks he sees a little boy, and now I'm hearing things, seeing things. What are you thinking? I am thinking that this is the most fascinating first date of all time. <laughs> but seriously, do you believe in this stuff? Yeah. Why? I have my reasons. Ooh, a mystery girl. I like it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I will prove to you that there is a scientific explanation for all of this. And I will even get that candle of yours to light. Okay. I am actually certified oh my God. as a master candle lighter. One, two, see. Yeah. There's a special touch. Thanks, Mr. Pyromaniac, but the green candle is the one that won't light. Observe. We like the lighter. Huh. <laughs> Told you so. What just happened? Sparks were coming off this candle like a sparkler, and this was just a normal wick wax candle. What's going on with Bob? He's working through some issues. Oh. Then I better get going then. Well, then, uh, good night. Mystery girl. Bob? Not now. I wanted to be there for Bob as a friend, but he almost seemed to be losing himself talking to this little boy. You're not alone anymore. You're not alone. You always know what to say. The next morning. Yes, I know. Hard to believe. It's Bob in the flesh. Washed, dressed, and not foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Look, I even made coffee. Thanks. So you're feeling better? Oh, much. A decent meal in my stomach. Morgan is thankful for Bob's renewed oh. spirits. Well, good. He's even planned a boys. trip to visit his sons. I'm going up to Saskatchewan right after work today for the weekend. Oh, Bob, that's that's great. Yeah, and uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'll see you.
I didn't know if it was going to attack me. All I know is that it wanted me very scared. Something more than a child was in the house. Okay, sir, I think we fixed it. Now just hit restart. Bob, Bob, something happened. I was in the shower and, and these hands, these hands are pushing in no, on no, me. No, no, sir, don't look at any other keys just yet. Can you please hold? Sir, just, can you please hold? I think it was that Joseph. He was trying to threaten me. You can't possibly think it was Joseph. He's just a little boy. I, d I don't want to calm down. All I'm saying is, that could have been explained by an updraft of cold air. If you have hot water entering and it's a cold bathroom, the hot air rises and pulls in the shower curtain. So you're telling me you'd rather believe in this paranormal mumbo jumbo, why? Because it's happened before, okay? When I was a little girl, I woke up in the middle of the night I saw this white, opaque, transparent form. It scared me beyond anything that I, I have ever experienced since. Morgan, those were nightmares. Just forget it. Little girls me. have nightmares all the time. Just forget it. Here's this guy that's supposed to be my friend, and he ate doesn't believe me, and B is just being, you know, completely unsupportive. Morgan seeks the help of the one person she knows will understand. So what's up? I'm scared. I have an idea. Stephanie, she was fascinated by what was happening, but at the same time, she was worried this was a place that I had called my home, and she really knew what that meant to me. Did some research, and I really feel like we can prove that Joseph really exists, once and for all. How are we gonna do this? We don't have any high-tech equipment. Sure we do. Stephanie believes they can capture the disembodied voice of Joseph on tape. It's not much, but... What paranormal experts call an EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. Yeah, I think it'll be a little work. What was that? What was that? Did you hear that? Oh, my gosh. Are you okay? Say that, She locked the front door. Of course. Are you sure? Yeah. No, seriously, it was something. I definitely felt like the spirit was directing its anger towards me. It was almost declaring a challenge. You know how you said most spirits aren't dangerous? I think this one is. You should do the honors. Who are you? How old are you? We're talking to the spirit that resides here. Did you knock over my figurine? How long have you been living here? The reason you chose this apartment. What do you want from us? Show yourself to us. The process is slow and painstaking. We're talking to the spirit that resides here. What's your name? Did you knock over my figurine? We thought we were really onto something, that we'd, we'd be able to get some results. There, there was nothing. 
Morgan is nervous spending the night, but it's too late to call the neighbor who helped carry Stephanie up the stairs. I have one problem, though. I was able to get into her bed with not too much trouble, but we realized that we weren't going to be able to get me back out of the bed. Don't worry about it. We'll just we'll call court in the morning, OK? Only if we're desperate. <laughs> What's up, Bob? Maybe you came home early. I don't think so. Morgan, hold on. Morgan, what's going on? Morgan, I can't see you. Morgan! Morgan! Okay, call court. Steph and I were basically stuck. I didn't want to leave her sitting there because I knew it could lock the doors and I knew it would probably take that opportunity to get the two of us apart. Nobody's answering. From 1.35 to 6 o'clock the next morning, we listened to this thing open and slam the door. At dawn, Morgan reaches court, and together they take Stephanie home. I just think that it would be safer if you went away for a few days. I mean, do your parents live around here? Is there some place you can go so this all can cool down? So now you're a believer? I believe in you. This was my home. I just was not willing to give that up, whether we had to deal with a spirit or not. Everything seemed to be going against her. Now she actually had a chance to discover who she was. <laughs> hey. I got this on my trip. It's been specially blessed, so it'll light the peace candle for sure. You wanna see? Sure. Morgan recalls reading that changes in temperature, even merely striking a match, can generate spirit activity. Here we go. One, two, three. No way. The green candle lit without any sparking or hissing. It really made me wonder what is going on here. Bob, something happened last night. At work, his personality was completely different. At the apartment, Bob was quite eerie and odd. It, it was unsettling. Did you see if we got anything? I guess. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. No way, it lit. And that scream was confirmation. We were dealing with something that, that was not a child. We really needed answers at this point. Hello, Miss Warren. This is Morgan Knudsen from Canada. Morgan contacts yeah, Lorraine right. Warren, the renowned paranormal investigator she'd seen on TV. Things are getting pretty worse. My my roommate, Bob, he's been acting... Morgan's description of the activity and Bob's obsession with Joseph send up a red flag to Warren. She knew immediately that it was not a human spirit. This was a front that this entity has put up in order to get itself into the house. Warren warns Morgan that she's not the entity's prime target. It's Bob. She's dealing with an individual who is under demonic possession. That person is not there. Something has taken over. <sighs> OK. Bob has fallen victim due to his emotional and physical distress. OK, well. The weakest, most vulnerable individual 
is the one who is going to come under possession. Warren tells Morgan that her only hope lies in spiritually fortifying herself and convincing Bob to renounce Joseph. Look, you don't have anywhere else to go. Come crash at my place tonight. Morgan appreciates the offer, but isn't ready to give up on her roommate. I wanted to be there for Bob. He didn't have anywhere to go or anybody to take care of him. He's gone, huh? Good. If Bob refuses help, Warren fears the worst. It was inevitable. There was going to be a tragedy in that home. Morgan's only hope for Bob is to follow Lorraine Warren's advice. Bob, I know how to make things right again. We have to get a priest. No. You have to know that you're not the same as you used to be. You know, while a cancer diagnosis will do that to you. That's, that's not it. I bet your boys noticed it. Don't you say anything about this! There's something dark, evil, and scary going on, and you know it! All right, all right, if I do it, will you shut up? All right, here we are. Come on. Come on. I'm not going in there. Oh, just, just come inside. I'm not doing this. Bob. Distraught but determined, Morgan meets with a Catholic priest. To repel evil, he suggests displaying symbols of God throughout the house and reciting the prayer of St. Benedict, patron saint of the poisoned. The priest regrets not helping more, but for that, he would need to meet with Bob. What are you? Some kind of Jesus freak now? I'm gonna say this once. Take it down! This isn't me. I have all this anger in me and I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe if you, you just ignore this Joseph just for one night, then maybe... There you go again, talking about things you know nothing about! What is it gonna take to get through to you? <laughs> I was greatly concerned for Bob, but I had to start looking at myself and the idea that I needed to get out. But before Morgan leaves for good, she resolves to follow through with the priest's advice. Several nights later, she persuades Court to recite the prayer of St. Benedict with her. Come on. Oh, 
glorious Saint Benedict, sublime model of all virtues, behold me, humbly kneeling at All virtues, behold me, humbly kneeling at thy feet. To thee I have recourse in all dangers which... Did you hear that? Let's keep going. Heal me against my enemies. Inspire me to imitate thee in all things. To live and die as a faithful child of God. And to attain the eternal happiness of heaven. Amen. Okay, we need to get out of here. Wait. two weeks, Morgan stays with court. Well, we at least agreed on one thing. I move in here. But Morgan still must retrieve her belongings, leaving court worried. You sure about this? Absolutely. You will wait for my call, right? I will. Okay. Bob was definitely demonstrating hostility and anger, and I had no way of knowing to what degree that would escalate to. Make sure your phone's turned on. personal business. Thank you. Oh, and here are the new forms we're supposed to use from now on. Okay. Where's Bob? I don't know. It's weird. He just took off. When? About an hour ago. Still think he's sick? I need to make a phone call.
me somewhere. Bob, I wanted to tell you. You come in here, sneaking around. No, I still care about you. I want to help you, but I I can't anymore. If you would just let go of Joseph, he's not who you think he is. He's not some little boy who needs you. Of course he doesn't need me. I need him. Stupid dolls with you. Just never liked them. But you already know that. twisted limbs. This is the little boy. This is Joseph. I left with knowing there is nothing more I could have done. Bob stops showing up at work. Soon after, he moves out of the apartment, leaving no forwarding address. It has been four years, and Morgan and Court's relationship continues to grow. Morgan and Stephanie remain friends. They are also colleagues, having formed Entity Seeker, an agency that helps those endangered by the paranormal. Take a look at the house. There are people that need help that don't feel that there are resources anywhere to get some answers. This incident has really helped me relate to them. And I know that they're feeling when they're faced with something like this. this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. Bobby Wilcott buys his wife Addie a new house, hoping to save their struggling marriage. When a dark force invades their lives, they refuse to believe it can hurt them. But when things turn violent, they must decide to stay and fight or run and risk tearing their family apart. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. New England, a region steeped in history and natural beauty. It is said that for hundreds of years, legions of dead have roamed this land. Many are lost souls, unable to find their way in the afterlife. Others remain tormented, looking for eternal peace. But some are reared from the depths of hell that only exist to torture the living. The year is 1978. Bobby and Eddie Wilcott are looking to buy a home. Oh, I don't think anybody's home here. Why don't you take the keys? Eddie is a housewife. No, no, go ahead. If you need me, I'll be out there. And Bobby is an engineer. She's not coming in? They are currently living with Bobby's parents, but it's been causing problems in their relationship. Eddie wants her own house. 
I met with some real estate agents, and I dragged Bobby along to look at some houses, and he just found fault with each and every single house we looked at. What do you think? Concerned that Addie may leave him, Bobby agrees to buy a house, believing that it will bring them closer together. I love it. It was built in the early 1800s, so it needs a little fixing up. We're not afraid of a little work, are we? Not a problem. <laughs> Come on. Let's go inside. Our realtor had been in the house once before. She said she would never go in it again. And we asked her why, and she wouldn't give us a reason. It's already open. Oh, go inside. estate agent the door was open wait here and don't go upstairs come on bobby bobby come on it's all right he said not to go upstairs besides i already put a down payment on the place we practically own it what i gave her a check a down payment i can't believe this you bought a house without oh, no. telling me i didn't buy it it was such a great deal it. I didn't want to let it slip away, so I put a deposit on it immediately. I had to. I checked the ad in the paper, and the place was so cheap, we would have lost it. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I can't believe you didn't tell me. I just did. Although Addie is annoyed, she hopes this house will be the answer to their marital problems. I was really excited about the idea that he was finally excited about having a home. I told you not to go upstairs. Sorry, but I can't buy a house unless I see it, can I? OK, come on. Let's go downstairs. Come on. We kind of brushed him off as crazy. We just thought that maybe he had gone senile. And why shouldn't anybody be upstairs? Check out the kitchen. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. You went upstairs. Y yeah. Well, why were all the doors nailed shut? It looked like they've never lived in the whole house all, all the years they were here. Hey. There was something peculiar going on here, but we just associated it more with the family rather than anything really being wrong with the house. In here, I noticed, is this one of those old player pianos? It doesn't work. All right, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I know why you didn't go inside. <laughs> well, it's fixer-upper, but it's price to sell. It's a real New England colonial house. It'd be so beautiful. <sighs> My first house. A clean slate. It'll give us a fresh start. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't wait to have my own place to put my own things in, to have my own holidays, and, and to have our own friends over and to be able to entertain them.
as the Wilcots get caught up in restoring the old house, all of their marital problems seem to disappear. Working side by side together brought us closer. <sighs> Maybe we should try moving back in with my mother. Oh, don't start. That is not even <laughs> funny. We were really excited about having our own home, and it was just going to be beautiful once we fixed it up. <laughs> Sounded like the big mirror fell off the wall. There was no sign anywhere of any disturbance. We were completely perplexed by what had caused that noise. We just had no explanation. At the time, we just... Did you leave that open? Shrugged it off. A few months later, while Bobby runs errands, Addie's friend Shannon stops by to see their new home. For some reason, the previous owners left the broken player piano behind. And I thought someone had thought the house was empty and had come in to break into the house. Upstairs, so we went to investigate. Eddie, it's an old house. Old houses make noises. Not like this. This was a huge Bobby, crash. It was a huge crashing sound loud. There's no explanation for that. Yeah. It's gonna take a while to get used to this old house. You know what? I gotta go. The mysterious noises begin to stir up old tensions in their relationship. What's with her? She's a little freaked, Bobby. The next day, Addie feels she must get out of the house. Broken. It couldn't make music automatically. 
It was baffling. the antique auction, but, uh, got plenty of things at the farmer's market. Were you just inside? No, I just pulled up. I was upstairs, and I heard the piano playing, and I came down, and there's no one there. Uh, it was music, real music, with the notes and everything, like the piano was working perfectly. I was... Bobby, Bobby, you're really upset. Yeah, no kidding. There has to be some explanation for this. I'm not so sure about that. Come on inside. Let me make you some lunch. No, you go ahead. I'm not hungry. Addie simply ignores what happened, not wanting to give Bobby a reason to move out. I kind of just dismissed it, that he hadn't really heard what he had heard. Over the next year, the cost of renovating and maintaining their home becomes a financial burden for the Wilcots. I don't understand why this bill is so high. There, there's no way, no way we are using that much power. You're the one that's always leaving the lights on. Something else is wrong. Where are you going? I'll be right back. I went and shut everything off, and the meter was still turning. see what's going on with the lights. What are you doing? I shut the power off. Look, that's why our bill is so high. The meter's broken. Well, we'll turn it on. Yeah, it reads the same whether it's on or off. Definitely broken. All right, well, this basement creeps me out. I'm going upstairs. Sorry. Leave the lights on. I was just checking. Well, you can call the electric company tomorrow. Oh, yeah, another big repair bill, and we're on our way to the poorhouse. I called the power company. They came up and checked it. The meter would, was, uh, was OK. It was very frustrating for me, because I thought this should be a, a very tangible problem that we could you know, get a handle on and, and fix. And uh, it was never really resolved to my satisfaction. One night, the following week, Bobby returns home from work.
Went to town, be back soon. the front door open. No, I didn't. Yeah. When I came in, this door was open. Uh, are you sure? I was standing right there. First time, I closed it, and it opened by itself. And then I came back in, and I locked it, and it opened again. What are we gonna do? I don't know, Addie. Maybe I should just nail all the doors shut. Bobby! I was always a person of reason. I thought there was a logical explanation for everything, but I was just completely unprepared for this. It's impossible. I don't understand. I heard it. I know. We just looked at each other's shop. We had no explanation for it. We were sharing the house with something. The next day, Addie arranges for a local dealer to take the piano away. You, uh, really think that'll do any good? Well, if this door opens with this lock on it, we know we have a problem. We never told anybody else about what was going on in the house for the reason that we just didn't want to be labeled crazy. Wow, you've been busy. I've come by because I have great news for both of you. How would you like to make a big profit? How'd you like to double your investment? I have a client, he came by the other day, saw the house, he's absolutely in love with it. He's ready to make an offer on the house. That's incredible. Is he serious? He's dead serious. I'm um, really not interested. You know what, we don't have to make In spite of all the strange events, Addie knows that the house is the glue to their marriage. Do you guys have my car? If they sell it now, she fears it would be the end of their relationship. He wasn't ready to grow up yet, even though I had made him buy me a house. And I felt that if we had to start all over again, if we had to buy another house, it might not happen. Thanks for the news. If we sell this place now, we'll make a profit. We can get a whole new place. But I love this house. It's too big for us. Well, um, soon. 
We're gonna need the extra room. For what? Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Are you happy? Of course I am! Over the next few years, the bizarre incidents happened so infrequently that the Wilcots learned to live with them. These occurrences, the electrical, the crashing noises, the piano music, it wasn't enough to really warn us to push the panic button. Hey, Sterling. The birth of their son, Sterling, now five years old, has created a new bond between Bobby and Eddie. Sterling came along, and we were enjoying our family, doing our little outings and barbecues and having our holidays. Bobby continues to make improvements on the house and yard. Hey, bud. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Find any ones? I didn't see any here. Hold on. Oh, look at that. Look what he's got. Oh, wow, I'm right there. Oh, wow. I can go fishing with that now. <laughs> sweetie, sweetie, you're a mess. Why don't we go get some lemonade, take a break for a little bit? No, I want to get this done. Grave marker. Someone's buried here. I can't take this anymore. I gotta get out of here. Come on, sweetie. Come on. The next day, Addie goes through county records to learn more about the land surrounding their home. I wanted to find out the names of the people who owned the property before our house was built. Andy notices that the initials of one of the owners matches the initials on one of the headstones they found. The discovery casts a dark shadow over the household. I had a feeling that the, um, the rightful owners, that the uh, human spirits might, might be bothering us. One day, Addie runs errands with Sterling, leaving Bobby to handle the housework. Bobby is now convinced that whatever is in the house has become more aggressive. I wanted to disbelieve it, but I couldn't. It was a sinister presence. We gotta get help now. He's here. The couple turns to their Lutheran pastor for help. Pastor, hi. Hi, Addie. Thank you so much for coming. It's nice being here, Addie. It's good to see you. Hey, Robert, how are you? I want to tell you what I told your wife the other day at church. Uh, we can offer you a blessing and a prayer. That's all I can do. We understand, and anything you can do, we really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you come in inside? Yeah. Yes. Oh, God of kindness and mercy, enter this home and grant it the grace of your presence. There was no provision inside the Protestant church for dealing with these occurrences other than he could do a blessing on the house. 
and that was more of an appeasement to try to ease our our fears. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Blessing? I hope so. I mean, it is quieter. You think? I'd like to think so. Yeah, me too. What was that? I don't know. Where are you going? Bobby, what are you doing? Tell them what? Our house is haunted? Stay here. Concerned for their child's safety, Addie and Sterling stay with Bobby's parents for the week, leaving Bobby at home, alone. If a 747 had broken a sound barrier 100 feet over our house, it wouldn't have been any louder. struggle for your very soul. The following day, Addie and Sterling returned home. It's getting worse. I just hate to wonder how bad can it get. That night. Riley! Come here, boy.
Addie tries to put the recent incident out of her mind, not wanting to move from the house that has brought stability to her marriage. I thought, well, I just have to just get a control of myself. I have to trust in God. And I thought the less I thought about it, the less that it could have an effect on my life. As a precaution, Addie and Bobby move Sterling into their bedroom. What is it? Daddy, Daddy. What is it? I felt a presence beside the bed. And suddenly, I saw this man, jet black man. I saw it. It's okay, there's nothing there. Yeah, no, it was here. It was my bed. You can't just pack up and leave. We had too much invested in the house. But we were just getting increasingly terrified. Desperate, the Wilcots decide to hire a team of paranormal investigators. Now tell me, what is it exactly that you are witnessing? For over three decades, Ed and Lorraine Warren have explored thousands of hauntings and paranormal phenomena in the US and Europe. Ed is known worldwide as a religious demonologist. His wife Lorraine is a clairvoyant. Almost immediately, she begins to sense what has been going on in the house. Things can stay dormant in these homes for years. Nothing happens, and then a family moves in where there is turmoil, arguing, fighting, animosity between family members. That is what triggers off and gives it and energizes the phenomena. Richard Jackson has been a student of the Warrens for the past year. I believe in ghosts in the same way that most people believe that they breathe air. It is not even a question of, of belief whatsoever. Lorraine explores the entire house. There was a definite, definite powerful presence in that home. There's where I knew I was dealing with something negative that I wasn't comfortable with at all. It's hot. There is a demon. This area is a portal to evil. At that time, we really didn't want to believe her. We were still denying that something that bad could be going on right in our own home. Demons can be difficult to remove, but it can be done. Lorraine said that if we left the house, the demons would just follow us wherever we went. We had to make a stand here at this time in this place. This house is going to have to be exercised. Uh, don't worry. We'll handle all of the arrangements. Now, it may take some time because we have to apply to the Vatican for approval. That could take months. <laughs> Later that night.
him off me! Bobby, 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 wake up! Wake up! Bobby, 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 it's a dream. It's a dream. No. Yeah. No, there were bugs all over me. I couldn't get them off. It was awful. Bobby, Bobby, sweetie, there's nothing here. No, they were real. I swear they were real. The nightmare was so real that I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head. It was, it was pretty frightening. Until the exorcism is granted, Bobby is adamant about protecting his family against the demon. The Wilcots call on Ed and Lorraine Warren for guidance, but they are unavailable. Desperate, they appeal to the Warren student, Richard Jackson. He offers to conduct a suffumigation, an ancient Christian rite intended to cast out evil spirits from a house. Defend us in the battle against the principalities and against the wicked spirits in the heavens. At Richard's we request, the Wilcots stay away from the house until the ritual is complete. Deprecate the God of peace so that he may no longer hold men bound. We come to thee, Asher Guardian and Patron, fourth hand the souls of the redeemed. A few days later. Why don't I fix you some lunch? Richard stops by to check on the Wilcox. I felt suddenly protective of the family, and I told them no matter what, there's always going to be help, and that I was going to help them find it. Eddie! Eddie! Stop breathing. Baby, breathe. Breathe, sweetie, breathe. Demon attack. Oh, my God. Stop Eddie, Eddie, call 911. Yes, yes, it's my five-year-old son. He, he's choking. Sterling. I need help. Go on. What's that? Salt. Blessed salt. If it is a demonic attack, it'll ward off the evil spirit. Baby, baby, breathe. Breathe, sweet, breathe. It's moment to please go. In the name of the Lord, I command any and all spirits of hate and spite to release this Lamb of God. It is not I, but the holiest of holy that commands you. I knew at this point the escalation was really ramping up and something had to be done. I'll burn this house to the ground if I have to. Sterling's brush with death pushes Bobby and Addie to their breaking point. We can't wait any longer. We have to have an exorcism. Bobby and Addie take Sterling to his grandparents' house and track down the Warrens. Because of the attack, Bobby and Addie must act quickly. They cannot wait for the Vatican to approve the exorcism. The Warrens call on Bishop Robert McKenna, who has performed over a hundred exorcisms throughout New England. When I first laid eyes on Bishop McKenna, somehow I knew this is this man's the real deal. Hello, Lorraine. Bishop. Ed, nice to see you. Bishop. Bobby and Addie will Well, shall we get to work? After speaking with the Warrens, Bishop McKenna believes that the house is possessed by a demon. 
demonic oppression is as real as anything. It's only God himself or exorcism that we can hope to uh, remedy the situation. I don't expect any trouble today. God is with us. Exergat Deus et dissipentur inimici eius et fugian ceorurant eu a faciertus. The sacrament of the cross commands thee, as does also the virtue of all the mysteries of the Christian faith. Theotokos commands thee. She, who in her humility did crush thy most proud head in the first instant of her immaculate conception, the faith of the holy apostle, Peter and Paul, I started to black out. I was right in front of God. And he said it was going to be okay. As Addie tries to regain her strength, she hopes that the bishop can rid her house of evil. May thy mercy, Lord, be upon us, and as much as we have hoped in thee. Every satanic power. Every assault of the infernal adversary, every legion in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you be uprooted in favor of the church of God. The creaking and groaning, it was just coming from everywhere is all at once. As wax melts before the face of fire, so may sinners perish before the face of God. Exercise. Bishop McKenna concludes the rite of exorcism, and immediately the evil vanishes from the house. It felt empty, like there was no one else in here with us. Um, the fog had lifted. It, it felt it felt beautiful. Mm. Do you smell that? It smells like roses. What you're smelling is the odor of sanctity. It's a sign of God's presence the end of a successful exorcism. After years of torment, Bobby and Addie have finally found peace. It's potting to them. This whole experience pulled us much closer together as a family unit. We realized if we could deal with this, then we could get through anything together. That's a good seat right there. <laughs> we went back to pretty much being the people we were before, and I think that was the greatest gift of all, that we got to go back to being husband and wife, parents, enjoying our family, and, and being able to enjoy it without being in fear in our own home. It's hard to believe this until you really observe it. You really can't send evil away forever. They're here with us, whether we like it or not.